because you're going to be in the presence of Christ, enjoying the glories of heaven, uh, enjoying worship, enjoying all the things that God has prepared for us. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, things in this country are getting bad. Mm -hmm. They're going to get a whole lot worse. Prices are... I mean, gas over the last week, I almost stood there and watched the numbers go up. That's how quick it went up. Mm -hmm. And that's going to continue. And it's going to get harder and harder to meet your duties and your responsibilities and your obligations. It's going to get harder to pay your bills. It's going to get harder to fill your refrigerator and your cabinet. It's going to be harder to uh, keep gas in your vehicle. But regardless of all that, we still have God. And if we can't get to that point where we can keep our hope in Him, we're going to be a miserable lot. That's right. Because all these things that are happening are going to dictate how we live. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, uh, everybody probably has seen the news, is, is Russia going to go into Ukraine or, or whatever? But even them being on the border right now is affecting the economy of the United States of America. If they go in, it's going to affect it way worse. And the things that have been put into place in the last little while, as far as this country is concerned, economically, are just pushing us more and more and more and more to a place where it's unsustainable. And when that time comes where you can't uh, live comfortably, what are you going to have other than Christ? There's the scripture, and I, it says, you know, if you can't run with the foot, then what are you going to do when the chariots come? Mm -hmm. If I can't handle it now, what am I going to do when gas is five bucks a gallon, six bucks a gallon, seven bucks a gallon? What am I going to do when a, a, a chicken leg is five bucks? Uh, what am I going to do then? If I can't trust God now, how am I going to trust him then? We got to get our minds in the right place. The Bible tells us that our minds need to be conformed. Conformed to what? To this. To, this has to be what dictates how we approach things, how we think about things, how we look at things, how we handle things. Uh, all of that. And, and that, that all begins by understanding and realizing there are going to be times you can't do a single thing about it. And you're helpless. But remember, you're never hopeless. You know, I don't know that some of us might not end up in some really bad places. But it doesn't matter as long as we have Christ. Because our eternity is far more important than our here and now. Our eternity uh, is what we are supposed to be focused on. Our eternity is what should give us incentive uh, to keep going and to push through and to have uh, that spirit of Christ indwelling us that enables us that no matter what the situation or the circumstance, we're going to make it. I want to jump down to Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Uh, listen what the psalmist is writing here. I will bless the Lord at all times. It don't matter what is going on. We should be praising God. It doesn't matter what's happening. We should be exalting the Lord. It doesn't matter uh, what is going on. Uh, our souls should make our boast in the Lord. Uh, it doesn't matter what is going on. Uh, we should be lifting Him up and glorifying Him and giving Him praise. I'm going to tell you something. If from your heart you begin to praise God and you begin to exalt His name and you begin to worship Him and you begin to lift Him up, you begin to feel good. 
good. Uh, you begin to feel his presence. Uh, you, the things of earth, uh, how's that song go? Become strangely dim uh, in the light of his glory. Uh, when you get in the presence of God, nothing else matters. Yeah, I think it was the last time we were together, I said that if I focus on that doorknob back there, you guys are just a blur. If I focus on Christ, uh, the things of this life are just a blur. Uh, they're not dictating uh, how I live this life. They're not stealing my joy. Uh, they're not stealing my hope. Uh, they're not dampening my faith. Uh, but I got to get that focus. I got to keep that focus. And it's going to get harder and harder to keep that focus because things are going to get worse and worse. Listen, what's the worst they can do to you here on this earth? Take her life. That's it. And if they take her, you know, they just give you a shortcut home. If, if they, I, I said this already, but if they take everything you own, you still have everything. Our problem is getting our focus in that place. Last couple weeks, I've been like, what? Mm -hmm. And Carla sent me a video of a little boy singing, mm -hmm. praise his name. I was sitting at my desk at work, and God just got all over me. When I began to sing along with that little boy, when everything falls apart, praise his name. When you have a broken heart, praise his name. I'm getting goosebumps now. When we get in the right place, God will see us through. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily by giving us money. Not necessarily by giving us uh, a big house. Not necessarily by curing all of our diseases. But he will take us through. We can walk in joy. We can walk in peace. We can walk in hope. Uh, we can uh, walk above whatever it is that's happening. If Amen. we would, but get that, our minds and our hearts and our spirits in the right place. Yes, Lord. Amen. David says here, I will bless the Lord at all times. Listen, no matter what is going wrong in my life, I ain't going to hell. Mm -hmm. They can take all my money and I ain't going to hell. Uh, they can kick me out of my house and I ain't going to hell. I can lose my job and I ain't going to hell. Uh, I'm going to spend eternity with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, regardless of anything else. And if that don't make me happy, then there ain't nothing going to make me happy. That's right. Amen. Amen. If that don't give me joy, I certainly can't count on material things to give me joy. Right. Things that are going to burn up, things that are going to be destroyed, things that are just fleeting and passing. And if I put my hope in those things and, and try to extract joy from those things, I'm never going to be a joyous person. I'm never going to be a happy person. You know what happens when you get those things that you think make you happy? You begin to worry you're going to lose those things that you think make you happy. And then you're miserable because you don't want to lose your happy. But you've lost your happy because you're worried about losing your happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how it is when it's not about Christ. Right. Look, you can enjoy the blessings of this life. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the blessings that God bestows upon you. I, I enjoy things that God allows me to have, that God allows me to do, that God allows me to <laughs> experience. I enjoy those. Yes, amen. But they're not the source of right. my joy. Right. They're not the source of my peace. They're not the source of my happiness. It has to be Christ. Amen. As I said, the last couple of weeks, I've been just wrong. I mean, and, and God, he kind of just let me wallow in it. Until I got to the point where I got tired of wallowing. And I'll be honest with you, that was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but once I stopped thinking about everything that's wrong <coughs> and started thinking about everything that's right, it changed everything. It changed 
Uh, how I'm thinking, it changed how I'm feeling, it changed how I'm looking at things. Because I got my mind on the things of God and off the other things. <laughs> and, and we can live that way. Again, I'm, I'm going to make this clear. I'm not saying it's easy. And it's not automatic. But it's possible. Because God said it's possible. You just got to be willing uh, to get into the promises and the word and the things of God and believe them over and above what you can see, over and above what you can hear, over and above what you can touch. And then your outlook begins to change and your attitude begins to change and your spirit begins to rise up and the joy begins to come. And that... And I'm going back to uh, Psalm 34. And this mm -hmm. is one way to get the, the, the whole process kicked off. Just begin to think on the blessings of God and praise Him for them. Just begin to think on all He's done for you and praise Him for it. Just begin to think on what Christ did. He left heaven. Uh, come and took on a form like this and gave himself and all he went through and, and began to praise and, and exalt him for all these things. And when you begin to do that, it begins to stir something within you and, and God begins to move and, and you begin to feel the presence of God and the joy begins to return. But you got to choose to do that. You've got to want to do that. Let's go to verse 4 of that chapter, 34. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. In this life, there's a lot of fears. Fears about my health, fears about my finances, fears about my family, fears about this, my job, whatever. There's a lot of fears, but when we seek the Lord, he'll deliver you from those fears. How many times in the Bible does it say fear not? We don't have to fear. As children of God, we have nothing to fear. Which president was it said we had nothing to fear but fear itself? We don't even have to fear fear itself. As children of God, we have nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing. Uh, when we're in that pit, when we're in that uh, depths of gloom and despair and worry and, and concern and all of that, uh, we need to begin to seek the Lord. We need to begin to call on the Lord. We need to begin to praise the Lord and lift up uh, His name. And He'll do exactly what the psalmist here said that He did for him. I saw the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto Him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Never says there anywhere that all his troubles went away. He saved him out of them. The troubles uh, had him trapped, had him uh, bogged down, had him mired. Uh, the Lord lifted him up out of that. Uh, Jesus said in this life you will have tribulation. It's going to come, uh, but you don't have to live in it. You don't have to wallow in it. You don't have to stay in it. Uh, you just get your heart and your mind and, and your spirit set on the Lord. You begin to think on all the good things that he's done. Uh, what's that song? He'll do it again. I can probably point to anybody in here and you can tell me a time in your life you were in way worse shape than you are right now. And he brought you out. Don't you think he can do it again? That's right. Don't you think uh, that he's there? Don't you think uh, that he uh, wants his children to live in peace, to live in joy, to live in happiness? He does. It says, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. We've got to believe God over and above what we see, what we think, what the world shows us, 
uh, how everybody else does things. We've got to put it all on Christ. We've got to trust and believe him. Uh, why does God not uh, get you out of this situation, but he does that? Well, I don't know. I'm not God. He has a purpose. Uh, and, and if we walk in his purpose, if we walk according to his will, we also have this promise. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. To them that are the called according to his purpose. Somewhere you're going to benefit from it if you can get your mind in the right place. If you can get your focus in the right place, you're going to benefit from it. Uh, the benefit might be that it draws you closer to him. The benefit might be that it increases your faith. Uh, the benefit might be something else. I don't know. Uh, but I can guarantee you, according to the word of God, that you will benefit from it if you walk through it with him. If you walk through it uh, with your eyes and uh, your heart set on him, it will come to a point where you benefit from it. It may be that uh, God needs to uh, put you through the fire to purify you a little more, uh, to make you more of a godly person, to conform you more to the image of us. And I don't know. God has his purposes. Uh, but what we have to do is trust that within it all. If I trust him, if I believe him, if I hope in him, I can do this without being brought down. I can do this uh, without being crushed. I can do this without being destroyed. I can do it just the opposite. I can do it with my soul lifted up. I can do it in joy. I can walk above it. But the only way that's ever going to happen is to keep your sights on Christ. Keep your hope in Him. When it starts getting really bad, and you don't know what to do and you don't know where to turn and, and you feel helpless, just remember you might be helpless, but you're not hopeless. We always have hope in Christ. When it gets down like that and your mind just starts racing and going here and going there, just say, no, I'm not going there. Begin to praise God. Begin to worship God. Uh, Think on the good things that God has done for you. Think on the good things uh, that God has given you. Think of uh, what waits for you at the end of all this mess. Get your heart and your mind in that place. Taste and see that the Lord is good. To taste and see that the Lord is good. You have to partake of it. You can't, you can't taste a, a, a pork chop by looking at it. You can't taste a, a pork chop by somebody telling you about it. You can't taste it uh, by smelling it. You have to partake of it. In order to taste and see that the Lord is good, you have to partake of him. I can't just stand here and tell you stuff and that'll do it. Uh, you can't just uh, read the word and that'll do it. Uh, you can't just see what happened for somebody else and that'll do it. You've got to partake of it. You've got to put your focus on him. You've got to put your sights on him. You've got to put your hope in him, your trust, your faith. I want to finish up by saying this. There are many, many good Christians throughout history. Men of God, women of God, who suffered greatly, greatly. We, we get a count of some of them in the Bible. In the Bible. Uh, we can read history of uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, or you can look some things up about men and women of God who were sold out to God, who went through all kinds of stuff. And God didn't deliver them out of it. He doesn't always. But those people, regardless of the situation and the circumstance and the problem and, or whatever it is they were going through, always walked up here, walked with Christ, put him first. And because of that, 
they could go through everything they had to go through. There's some stories of, uh, of people going through horrible things and, you know, praising God while they're being burned. Uh, praising God when they're getting ready to... Get